Halloween. Leave now while you still can. Leave now before Master finds you. Who is that knocking at my door? Who is that knocking at my door? Who is that knocking at my door? Be gone with you. <laughs> Hello everyone, I am once again joined my friends for another uh, movie review. These are my friends, Jeremy Christian, say hi. hi. Hello my friends. In today's video we are going to be talking about Stephen King's Carrie. So guys, what do you think of Carrie? I really like it. It's a great adaptation of a great book. It's very, yeah, it's scary. Oh yeah. It's also, you've got a very sympathetic main character. Right. And you just, it's easy to empathize with her. Absolutely. What do you think, Christian? I fucking hate this movie. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I'm kidding. I, I, I think this is a great movie. It's uh, one of my favorite. I haven't seen a lot of Brian De Palma's films, but of what I have seen by him, it's definitely, might actually be my favorite De Palma film, if we're being honest. And it's... Definitely one of my favorite Stephen King adaptations. It's right up there with The Shining, Stand By Me, Cronenberg's adaptation of The Dead Zone, right. or uh, Shawshank Redemption. I think it is like one of the great like Stephen King right. adaptations. Uh, uh, full disclosure, uh, I, it's actually been a while since I personally have watched this one, so... I remember like 98% of the movie because I used to watch this all the time, but... I. Certain scenes might be, uh, I might get certain scenes confused, so just full disclosure. Right. Uh, but yeah, no, it's a fantastic movie based on an equally fantastic novel. Right. And like, knowing you, you're, you guys are big Stephen King fans, even though, I, mean, I do love Stephen King, but I'm not as big as the finale like you guys are. I know this was like his like breakout as a uh, horror writer, what got him on the map of being like one of the most successful, uh, not just horror but successful writers ever in the history of Oh yeah, it was his first uh, published novel yeah. and uh, it's interesting like when he was writing it uh, he actually like didn't like it, like he didn't think he could do it and right. he had a really difficult time writing the book and he actually threw it in the trash. Right. His wife Tabitha fished it out of the trash and was like what the hell are you doing? Finish this. <laughs> like, she, she's the one who really encouraged him to finish the book and get it published. Interesting. And, yeah. uh, and keep in mind, like, at that time, they, they were living in poverty, basically. Right, right. And so, you know, Stephen King sent it out and actually got a letter back with a check for, like, a couple thousand dollars, right. which for him was a small fortune. Because keep in mind, they were living in a trailer at the time, and Stephen King was, like, I think teaching either high school or college. Right. I'm not really sure which. I think but it was high school. Right. Yeah, so he, you know, Carrie, like, is basically the book that made him. And right. this, of course, was the first movie he made based on one of his books, yeah. too. And I think the movie had a big part to play in it, too, right. because, like, while I think the book was successful when it was first published... The movie became like a cultural phenomenon. It did. It's yeah. this is like a movie like I've really enjoyed like watching a lot. Like ever since I got into horror movies, especially I'll never get the first time I saw it was like in high school. It was like there was just something about like Carrie White. I felt like this like deep connection that it's like hard to. I mean, well, I mean, I'm not a girl, but still, it's just uh, she no. She's like, an incredibly sympathetic. Absolutely, I mean, yeah. She's, the victim of not just bullying, but child abuse as well. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Like, not only that, I, I could also like to relate to, like, feeling like an outsider in high school. Like, I didn't, like, fit or blend in and stuff like that. Well, mm -hmm. minus the uh, crazy, psychotic mother in this Oh, my God. I mean, this movie does remind me of the time when I was in high school. I had my first period, and, like, <laughs> I didn't know what a period was at the time. And everybody was telling me to plug it up, to plug it up, and I didn't know what they were talking about. And what's even more fucked up is when I found out what a period was, I was also told I'm not supposed to get periods, so I don't know what was happening. <laughs> I'm not going to lie, I never took a sex ed class, but that was the first time I learned about a woman's period, for real. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah that, okay. no joke. But hey, we all learned something from somewhere. That was one of them. But anyway, besides that, this is just an amazing film. Great performances, and it's just a uh, phenomenal like, uh, like film of like not just, like, just horror in general. Yeah. yeah, but what's also interesting about this movie is 
it's not just horror. Like, it's also... Coming uh, of kind age. Of, yeah, it's also kind of a messed up drama thing. Yes. But there is humor in Carrie, too. A little Like, bit. that scene where... Uh, what the hell was his name is Sue Snell's boyfriend? I'm uh, oh, Tommy. I have it right now. Yeah, down. when him, him and those other two oh, guys are... Billy. Oh. No, no, that's... Uh, that's uh, Chris's boyfriend. Right, yes, yes. That's oh. John Travolta's Yes, character. you know, he's, he's right, actually. Yeah, so, so, like, the scene where they're uh, going to get a tuxedo, and, like, they're getting into that goofy argument, and then all of a yeah. sudden you see the film spit, speed up. Like, you could tell there were some scenes that were meant for almost, like, comedy. Yeah. Which is interesting. Like, it's more than just horror, which right. I really like. Right. Yeah, and the movie has a great cast. It you know, does. Sissy Spacek, Piper Laurie, yeah. Nancy Allen, John Travolta, yeah. PJ Souls. Yeah. I'm, and also, uh, the guy, not to cut you off, but the guy, uh, I forgot the actor's name, but the guy who played Charlie Cheswick in One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest plays, yes. like, uh, yes. that teacher in that one scene. Yes. The one who goes... Beautiful. I don't know why. I, I found this character to be such a, like a dick, though, in that scene too. Yeah, he was supposed to be a dick, right? Uh, Tommy even said, "You suck." Yes. <laughs> what was that, Tommy? I, I said, "Oh shucks." <laughs> See, I do remember most of this movie. That's okay. You, you were saying, Jeremy? I was saying I met Piper Laurie years ago. Same, so did I. Yeah, she was making an appearance at a screening of The Hustler. And uh, I actually asked, you know, how her death scene in Carrie was filmed. And I vaguely remember her saying, you know, they attached these steel things to her. And I guess the knives, when they were thrown, would hit that. Right. Um, but she was very nice. Yeah, she was. Um, definitely not a psychotic. <laughs> I got a Carrie photo and poster signed by her. Nice. So, yeah, that was good. And I also met Nancy Allen. So did I. She was very nice, very sweet to talk yeah. to. She told me that the prom scene was very dangerous to film. Right. And only the people who were in that scene were allowed to be there. Right, right. And that's, that, I, I think like the performance in this film are great. Sissy Spacey does a great job. Hybrid Laurie does a great job. And Amy Irving, everyone is yeah. just uh, yeah. downright excellent. Yeah, we should also talk about like how Margaret White... It's one of the great Stephen King villains, I think. Oh, yeah, yeah. Like, uh, you know, she's just so... That, to a certain extent, there is something kind of sympathetic about her just because you realize she's severely mentally ill. Oh, yeah. But at the same time, that doesn't excuse the abuse that she puts Carrie oh, no, through. She, yeah. She's, yeah. She, she's, a, she's a psycho to, uh, to Carrie. She, like, really, like, treats her like... Like shit, because as I said before, like before we shot this review, that um, what's her name, uh, Miss Collins, she was a better like mother figure to to Carrie than yeah. Carrie's mother. Yeah, but you know it's funny though. Like, would you call Carrie the protagonist? Because even though I think Margaret White is the true villain of the film, right? To say Carrie is not a villain, to, because if you really think about it. What is, the, minus the supernatural stuff, what is the difference between what Carrie does and what a school shooter does? Mm. Technically speaking, it, it kind of is the same thing at the end. You yeah. know, she does yeah. kill innocent people. True. Yeah. You know, so it's like, well, it, it was you that, sympathize with her, but I would still say she is kind of a villain to some yeah. degree. It, it was at that point where after when, just when things are going all well at the prom, where everyone's like, Treating her well, respecting her, letting her like fit in with the crowd, and uh, she goes. She has a nice dance, and she kisses Tommy, and then she's named the prom queen. And all of a sudden, they dump pig's blood on her. And then at that moment, she like loses like rage. And, but it, I feel like it was a misunderstanding because of what I think she was thinking about what her mother was saying. Yeah, oh, yeah. I'm gonna laugh at you. Honestly, like the scene where you see all the people laughing at her, I'm willing to bet that. Not as many people were actually laughing at no. her as she thought in her head. No, she, she, it was all in her mind, so that's how yeah. she saw it. And that's why it was misunderstood, especially when she kills Miss Collins. Like I said, she was like a mother figure to her. and Yeah. Yeah, yeah she definitely does not deserve to be killed. But again, it was all misunderstanding. Everything happened, like, so fast. Now, did you, either of you guys read the book? Yeah, I, I, I didn't. No, I'm, I'm guilty. But go on. Like, what do you guys think of the book? Oh, it's a, it's a great book. But, uh... The movie changes a few things from the book because in the movie at the end, she really only destroys that prom. Right. In the book, she destroys that entire fucking town. Right. Like, the entire town is destroyed at the right. end of it. And actually, what's interesting is the book was written 
in the form of like newspaper clippings and diary entries and letters sent back and forth between different characters right. and like it was all because basically what Carrie does in the book becomes a major event that the whole world finds out about so like in the universe of the book there are books written about what Carrie did and right. like that's kind of how the book is made up it's like made up of excerpts from these different books and shit about what Carrie did it's really interesting like there's Kind of a weird commentary on how what Carrie does affects society in some way because right. now society knows that telekinesis exists. Right. Like, the movie didn't touch on any of that. You know, well, the movie was more like self contained. It was. But, but I remember there's a scene in the film where she's in the library, like trying to think that how can I control this? How can I like manage it rather than like losing control over her, which. What she does, she was definitely doing her research and her homework, but like I said, up until the end, she definitely lost a lot of rage and control at the end of, with the the prom scene. But then again, who would definitely lose rage and control after being dumped pig's blood on their, uh, their, their selves? Mm-hmm. And I don't know why, remember the part when the bucket dropped on Tom, uh, Tommy's head? Mm-hmm. When I first saw it as a teenager, I'm like, wait a minute, how is that possible? But then I read that he actually got, uh, his skull like, got fractured after um, getting hit by the bucket. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Kind of sad, especially he—he he definitely did not deserve to. Uh, oh yeah, Tommy was a great character. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. And also Sue, Sue, uh, Sue's character. For, well, at first she bullies Carrie, but then she kind of like tries to uh, learn from that, and then she realizes, you know, I, I made a mistake. I'm going to try to like be nicer to Carrie, let her. Because uh, I, I like him when she asks like Tommy to take Carrie to the prom. Yeah. 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 Yeah, just I mean, sure. this whole movie does remind me a lot, John, of like when we were in high school and I <laughs> dumped that bucket of pig's blood on you in the middle of Mrs. Gerspeck's class. Do you remember that? No. <laughs> oh, you must have blocked it out of your mind. I guess so. I have no memory of high school. Everything in high school is all blurred to me. Except my prom night, though. My prom night's... I can't believe I'm even asking this. Did you guys go to your senior proms? No. Yeah. What, what did you think? It was all right. It might, might suck, but that's a different story. That's all I'm going to say. Anyway, moving on. Because they dumped a bucket of pig's blood. <laughs> <laughs> I also like it how it has like themes of like you know growing up, being a teenager, etc., and stuff like that in the movie. And I also uh, what else did I want to talk about? Uh, let's see. Oh yeah, when I first saw this film, it made it amazed me how like. This was, like, John Travolta's, like, first movie. Well, I mean, before that, he was around, but he only did, like, a few minor things. But this was, like, his first film that he did at the time before his breakout in, like, Grease and Saturday Night Fever. And, yeah, he's yeah. done a lot of good movies since then. Yeah. Yeah. I remember when I met Nancy Allen, I asked her, like, what was that like working with an unknown, unknown John Travolta at that time? She said the moment, like, he walked in when he auditioned, they're like, this is our guy. Yeah. And hence, a star is born. Yeah. yeah, this was like one of his first movies. Yeah, yeah. I, I forget like what his first film was at the time. I think it it might have been the Devil's Reign. Yeah, the Devil's Reign. Was that? Why does that sound familiar to me? Devil's Reign. William Shatner. Yes, I, I never saw it, but I know about that movie. Yeah, Ernest Bork Bur- Nine or yeah. yeah. Wow, that's amazing. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I guess since we've like talked about like. Carrie, uh, Piper Laurie, and all the other characters and stuff, and also, like, coming of age, like, teenage growing up and stuff. Uh, I guess now I want to move on to about, like, have, did you ever see the, the Carrie sequel? I have no interest ever to review this solo. This is basically not only a review of the first Carrie film, but basically about the other Carrie adaptations up until the end at this point. Uh, no. I've you never, never saw the sequel? Carrie too. Did you see it, Christian? Mm-hmm. And I, you- I don't mind it. I, I really don't think it's that bad of a movie. Yeah. It's not great, but... It was all right, right. you know. Uh, one thing that's interesting is, you know how in Carrie 2, like, the the guys in the movie, like, have this little competition where they're going to, like, sleep yes. with some girl. And, like, a lot of that was based on real shit that was happening in, like, the early 90s. And, really? Yeah, the director oh, really? was basing a lot of that on some actual cases. Right. Uh but yeah, no, it, it, Carrie 2 is interesting. Again, it's not a great movie, but I don't mind it at all. I, uh, I, and I've I, never seen the two remakes. Actually, no, I saw parts of the 2002 remake, but I have never saw the Chloe Grace Moretz one. I saw the uh, second one. I saw like not that long ago, like three years ago at the time during the pandemic, and I didn't like it. It was a wasted, like unnecessary sequel that just did not need to be made. And also... 
I was this Carrie's daughter. Like, where the heck did, like, Carrie... No, no, it's Carrie's sister because Carrie's father screwed at another woman. Okay. You know, he left Margaret White, screwed another right. woman, and that's how gotcha. the girl in uh, yeah. Carrie 2 was Amy, born. Amy Irving's in the film, and I feel like her character, was, there was potential in it, but it was just wasted. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and you, you said that you never, you only saw the um, two thousand two or wait, oh, um, two thousand two one. Yeah, I, I only parts saw, of it. I never saw that one. Did you ever see that? I saw bits and pieces. All right, and I did see the twenty thirteen uh, remake. I didn't like it. It's been, I haven't seen that since it came out. I never had any intention to going back to it. What did you think of that one? I thought it was all right. I got Julianne Moore's autograph on uh, two pictures, one of which was from Carrie. Right. And the signature, unfortunately, got smudged. Right. I mean, they had decent choices, but I just don't remember their performances like that well compared to, like, Piper Laurie and Sissy Spacey, you know what I mean? Mm. You say you didn't see that one, right? No, no. All right. As I'm editing this video, I forgot to mention that the character I love from Stranger Things, Kara was an inspiration for that character because both characters both have telekinetic powers. All right, I guess we've uh, just about wrapped up and covered everything about Carrie, so, uh... Like the video, subscribe that bell button, and uh, we'll see you next time for more stuff coming up. Long, long, long days and pleasant nights. <laughs>